Today we're going to tear down the new Blue Eddy Elite 30 version 2. We're going to, first of all, top up the charge, give it a full load test, and drain it down to 0% until it shuts down. We're going to look at the load, we're going to time it. Then I'm going to rip this thing apart. We're going to tear it right down to the boards, actually separate the boards, remove the battery so that we can inspect the batteries and actually look at the physical cells. And this one's got some pretty good sized cells in it. Let's check it out. We're going to look at the Blue Eddy Model Elite 30 version 2. This is the official unboxing. Now, I've been using a Blue Eddy EB3 for several years now as the UPS for my computer system. It runs 24 hours a day, seven days a week. It's never let me down. It's been just absolutely perfect. I expect nothing less from this one. We're gonna unbox this, we're gonna test it. We're going to tear it down and we're gonna take a look at the unit itself. It's available in 100, 120, 220, 230, and 240 volt versions. So it's a unit that's available around the world for all the different countries and the different voltages. As we open up the box, you will find an instruction manual, which we won't be reading. We have an accessory pack here. In, in the accessory pack, we have a DC power cable to charge it from a car and a big AC power cable for powering the unit from mains power. This is a small portable unit. Great for camping and portable use in a car and for smaller applications like backing up your computer. This one here is 600 watts, pure sine wave. It's a 288 watt hour battery. And on the front we've got a DC input. This is for charging from solar or from your car battery. It says 12 to, 8, uh, 12 to 28 volts input, 10 amps, so it'll charge on uh, photovoltaic cells up to 28 volts. has a 12 volt DC output, 10 amps, for powering up equipment that requires 12 volts, and it has two more 12 volt 8 amp ports. USB-C up to 140 watts. Actually, it's got, it's got two USB-C it's got a 140 watt and a 100 watt USB-C and two 15 watt USB-A outputs and of course the pure sine wave. To turn it on we press the button and we see that hey it's at 39%. So we're going to charge this thing up before we put it on its load test and I'm going to load this thing down and uh, we'll see what, what it does. But uh, right now we're at 39% which is where they shipped it and uh, on the side here we've got the AC input to charge it up. It's got a screw for grounding if you want to earth the unit. We're going to load this thing down and time it. We'll, we'll try to load it up to as close to 600 watts as possible. It comes with a nice beefy power cable. Take the plug protector off and we'll just power it up. Plug it straight in. It should automatically go into charge. And if I clip my current meter on, we can monitor the current consumption. It's charging at 200 watts right now. I've got the app on my phone. We changed the, the charging speed by the app. I'm not registered. I'm in offline mode, as you can see. I can see my EB3A, which is inside the house. That's powering up my computer, and it has been for a long time. So this one's gotta be this one. So I'm just gonna connect it over Bluetooth. All right, it's connected. It's telling me I'm at 42%, which is the same as the display. All right, now, okay, I, I got it set for um, for the turbo charging and it's just done by holding the two buttons down and switching it over and uh, that switches it to the higher power charge 328 watt if you want to change it through the app you actually have to sign in that's why I couldn't tap on here and change it because uh, I gotta do it from here but to do it from here you just hold the two buttons down and it's P03 and you just change the mode and then hold the button and then tap both keys again and now it switches it right now back to now switch it back to 200 watts right back onto eco hold the two of them p03 and now it should go to 372 that's how you switch it 
All right, the battery is now fully charged, so we can disconnect it. Actually, we'll leave it connected to power right now, so we can try out the, uh, the UPS function of it. So I'll turn on the AC outlet by tapping the AC button. When I turn this on, it'll, it'll show input versus output. No, it won't because I just overloaded it because this draws more than 600 watts when it's cold and this is limited to 600 watts. We'll try this again. Turn it on. Will this come on? I don't have the... But it, it overloads. So this draws more power than 600 watts and it just shuts down. It draws 800 watts. So let's uh, find something that draws a little bit less than 600 watts. Okay, we'll um, turn the AC back on. This time I'm going to power up my metal highlight light that draws about 450 watts or so. Once it gets going it should draw about 470. This is my uh, 400 watt lamp but then the ballast and everything. We'll let the lamp get up to full power and then I'm going to unplug the input power. The light should not go out. I'm now going to unplug it. Saw the light flicker there momentarily but it did not go out. Now we're running on battery power. We're going to time it and see how long it runs. And I'll be back. It says it's going to run a little over half an hour at 500 watts. It says 0.6 hours. So we'll see. So it should be a little more than half an hour. And my battery on my phone is getting dead too. Also, since my phone is uh, needs to be charged, let's turn on the DC power. DC power is on. And uh, I guess I can only use one of these USB-A. I don't have a USB-C USB cord, so I'll just pop it into one of these. It's a 15 watt charger. And we'll get the phone charging at the same time. There we go. Now we're charging the phone and running the light. That tells me I've got 30 minutes left. It's been going now for about a minute and 45 seconds. We'll see how long it goes. One thing I'm going to try is I'm going to try plugging the power back in just momentarily, switching it back to AC. I want to see how the transition goes over to AC. We we'll plug it in and it just switched back over. Now you see the input power is going up to 737 because it's got the 509 watt draw plus it's charging the battery. I'm going to switch it back again to battery. So I'm just showing how it would operate as a UPS. You can certainly use it as a UPS. A perfect use for this is actually to back up your modem, like for your, for your internet or your home phone if you're on a VoIP service. Fiber optics coming into homes now. If the power goes out, you've lost everything. But putting a unit like this on will keep your ONT or your gateway up and running so your phone and your internet will work during a power failure. Here's our voltage, 119.3 volts. Here's the waveform under full load. That looks like a pretty clean sine wave to me. Yeah, there's a little bit of, but there's no spikes or anything. It's looking good. Remember, this is an inductive load that we are putting on this. So it's a, it's a uh, an arc lamp, but it has a magnetic ballast. So this is quite an inductive load. So we're gonna see a bit of a ripple caused just from the actual load itself. It's a big light, I'll show it to you, it's huge. So this is the lamp that we're using, the arc tube. Metric arc, love them. The light quality off this lamp is excellent. It's really uh, a very nice light source. It's a great light to work under. It just draws a lot of power, and produces an incredible amount of heat. Okay, we've been going 29 minutes. We're down to 4%. I expect that the light is going to kick out any second now. So we'll just wait down to 2%. We'll wait and see how long it goes. 30 minutes. We're going 30 minutes exactly. And that's drawing 500 watts of the rated 600. There we go. 30 minutes and 26 seconds is how long it ran till we got down to zero. Now we can tear this thing down. 
I don't like to open these up when they're fully charged because quite frankly they could be dangerous if I were to slip with a screwdriver and short something out we could have major sparks so at least when it's in a discharge state it's a little bit safer there's still some energy in the batteries but nothing like when they're fully charged so let's uh, crack this thing open and just see what's inside it held together with some Phillips screws on the bottom I wonder if the top will pop off now with those screws removed. This should break in half. Yeah, the top just lifts off. There we go. So here are the cells here. This is the direct battery connection. I'm discharged now. I'm at 16 volts. And it is a 16 volt, 18 amp hour. <laughs> Tipped out a few screws, including these ones. I should be able to lift off this front panel now if I can. Let's see, I probably have to disconnect a few. Yeah, that plug's undone. I'm going to disconnect the power wires here for the inverter. There we go. Okay, now I should be able to lift this off. That was out of the way. Next, we can remove the remaining screws that hold the board in place. Now, this will lift off. I'll undo this connector. Slide up that door, undo this connector. These would be probably temperature sensors that go to the battery. Here's the, the battery. It's got a metal shield over it too. There it is. I'll take a look at this. We'll turn it over. Oh, they're, they're large cells. There's only five of them in here. They're warm, obviously, because it's been discharge heavily. The numbers on this battery is a uh, IFR40135 18 amp 3.2 volts. These are huge these cells. I, I was expecting it you know to have two of them in series but it doesn't. It just has five cells. Okay I think that's um, that's show and tell. You've seen the inside. You've seen the battery pack. They got uh, spacers in between here to keep the cells tight so that they don't move around. Here's the main board. The battery terminals here. This is for the DC side of things. The battery connects here, but you got the terminals here that connect to the front board. And then the front board plugs in here to control the inverter. We've got an inverter here and we've got a sine wave converter. The inverter is this one over here. These will be the, the MOSFETs on this side. These will switch on and off quickly to generate the induction into the transformer which will step the voltage up. Actually the voltage will be much higher because we need 120 sine wave, right? We need 100, uh, 120 uh, volts average but it's like 170 peak to peak so it's going to probably ge be generating around 300 volts because uh, your sine wave floats halfway, right? It's not, it's not between ground and the full power. It's, you, you're floating halfway. So the, the actual transformer is stepping this up to a, a relatively high voltage. It's rectified to DC. So one of these, one or two of these is going to be a diode. And then you've got transistors to convert the DC voltage back into a sine wave, which is presented out here to the output terminals over here. Capacitors here. Everything is glued down so that it's being bumped around, being transported. You don't have to worry about parts coming loose. There's a conformal coating on the board to keep moisture away from critical parts. You can see it here. Got a debug port and a clock and digital input output. Ground 3.3 volts and reset. This is for downloading. I guess this is for loading up the initial firmware when it doesn't have power. Got a resettable fuse over here. Board looks to be uh, pretty pretty well built. Looks to be uh, very well built. We'll look at the other side of it here. Again, conformal coating. Big beefy traces. Fuses. Everything's got a conformal coating on it. There's a couple of fuses. Here's 50 amp fuses it looks like. Yeah, 50 amp fuses right on the battery so that if something if something catastrophic were to go wrong, these two fuses, they're 50, it looks like they're 50, 50 amps, 50 T, is that what that means? T is probably time delay. There's two of them, so literally you could draw 100 amps from the battery until the fuse is popped. Like it, like it. Okay, let's uh, start to put this thing back together. 
We'll start reassembling. Even with the screws not in for the battery, it's still energized. Like if I test here, I got 16 volts. So we got full power. I gotta be really careful that nothing shorts out on here. This is when you don't want your magnet on your screwdriver to be a little bit weak. When you're dealing with hot circuitry. Just like that. The last thing to do for our test is to do a charge and see how long it takes to charge. So I've got it ready to power up. I plug this thing in. Plug this bad boy in. It should start to charge. It's at 0%. It should kick into charge here automatically. There we go. It's drawing 289 watts and it's starting to charge. Now they say it should charge up in about 40 minutes to 80 percent. We're going to let it go to 100 percent and see how long it takes to charge. All right we're now at 100 percent. It took just over an hour. It's nice small and compact doesn't weigh a lot. This one's just the right size for you know if you're using it in your camper especially with a solar battery to charge it up to run small things right i would think more maybe tenters would use this because if you're in a camper you may have a bigger setup but certainly something like this will get you going uh, power your internet modem and your tv and so forth or your computer in a power failure so you can get back online and even though it doesn't have a huge capacity drawing 500 watts I still got 30 minutes so at 250 watts you would expect to get about an hour on here most computers these days don't draw unless you're running a gaming machine most computers don't draw more than a couple hundred watts anyway so that would give you an hour or a little under an hour running a monitor as well with one of these units but great for charging phones and so forth on the go and uh, drain power failures and the fact that you can charge it from your car or charge it with a solar uh, panel that'll allow you for off-grid operation or when you're traveling or camping or staying in your van something like this might be good for you know traveling around in like a like a converted van for example anyway great little unit i'll put the link in the description thanks for watching